Well, welcome. In this video, we're going to be looking at uh, magnitudes of rotations and measures of arcs. Specifically, we're going to be spending a lot of time dealing with degrees and with radians. Uh, to begin with, let's first talk about, well, what is a degree? Well, anytime we have a rotation, a rotation is a transformation under which each point is the, in the plane turns a fixed magnitude around a fixed point called the center of rotation. In other words, if we have a rotation, basically all we're doing is we're taking a point and rotating it or moving it around a fixed point. A lot of times that fixed point is going to be the origin, which is the coordinate 0, 0. Now, another term that you heard used there is the word magnitude. Magnitude is referring to how far that point is being moved. The magnitude can be measured in radians or in degrees. Uh, a lot of times it's going to be in degrees, but in this lesson it's going to go back and forth between the two. In fact, in a lot of these lessons you're going to see in this chapter, some of them are going to be dealing with mag the magnitude is going to be in degrees, and sometimes the magnitude is going to be in radians. So we'll look to see what you need to look for to know the difference between the two. Now, the key here on this first uh, page here of our notes is looking at the fact that when we're dealing with a uh, positive degree rotation, that means that it's going in a um, counterclockwise direction. Okay, As you can see up above here we have the circle and point A is being moved to point B and rotation there is 50 degrees. And notice it's a positive 50 degree, 50 degree rotation because we're going in the counterclockwise direction. Now if we ever change to being a uh, clockwise rotation, a clockwise rotation is always going to be a negative degree rotation. Okay, so it's important to recognize the difference between the two. The reason why when we go in clockwise, it's a negative degree rotation, and we go counterclockwise, it's a positive degree rotation, is due to the coordinate plane. If you think about the coordinate plane, uh, quadrant one is in the top right corner, and then going counterclockwise, we would go quad quadrant two, then quadrant three, then quadrant four. So those would be the four, qua the four quadrants. Well, in the same way, since our... Uh, quadrants go in the counterclockwise direction, our degrees are also going in the counterclockwise direction. So when they're positive, it's referring to counterclockwise. If it's a negative degree rotation, it's referring to a clockwise uh, rotation. So if you're get, going back to this previous uh, diagram, if we're going from point a, B to point A, we would say that's a negative 50 degree rotation. Now the other thing to make sure that we understand is a revolution. So a full revolution would be 360 degrees. So if we're dealing with parts of a, of a revolution, like we're going to be looking at here, um, we're just going to, what we're going to do is we're going to use the fact that, again, one revolution is 360 degrees. So if we're dealing with a partial revolution, we would deal with whatever that partial revolution is and multiply it by 360. Or even if it's more than a full rotation, we would take whatever that more than a full revolution would be Multiply that by 360 to figure out how many revolutions uh, we're working with, or how many degrees we're working with. So let's look at uh, these three examples so you can see more what I'm talking about as far as figuring out how many degrees a revolution is. So here we're working with one-eighth of a revolution, and it's counterclockwise, it's important to note. So if it's counterclockwise, again, it's going to be a positive degree rotation. So a full Oops, a full revolution would be 360 degrees. So we're going to take 1 eighth of 360 to figure out how many degrees this is exactly. And when you do that, you end up getting 45 degrees. Well, let's look at the next one. The next one is 2 thirds of a revolution clockwise. So that means it's going this direction. So remember, if it's going that direction, it's, if it's going clockwise, it's going to be a negative degree rotation. So we take 2 thirds times negative 360 degrees. When we do that, we get a negative 240 degrees. So this would be a negative 240 degree rotation. And lastly, this one is 1 and 1 fourth revolution. So I could take 1 and 1 fourth and multiply that times 360, or convert this to an improper fraction, which would be 5 fourths times 360. In either case, I end up getting a total of 450 degrees. This represents a 450 degree rotation. So let's talk now about radians. Okay, in the next uh, rest of this chapter, we're going to be going a lot, or dealing a lot with radians and with degrees. So 
If you read this first paragraph, it says, in rotation, points that are farther from the center move or turn a greater distance along the arc of a circle than points that are closer to the center. So if you look over here at this diagram, pretend, for example, that maybe this is a tire. And G, moving a point from G to C, maybe that's along the rim of the tire. And S to E would be moving on the outside of the tire. Well, you can notice that distance here in blue is shorter than the distance here in red. Even though the degree measurement is the same, like let's say if this was a 20 degree rotation, the distance that G would travel to C is going to be a shorter distance than what S would travel to E. So measuring rotation degrees does not tell us anything about how far a point is being moved. To solve this problem, a unit is needed that, re that re is related to the length of an arc. And this unit that we're going to be working with is called the radian. So a radian me measure, what that's going to do is that's going to help us figure out exactly the distance a point is traveling. Because a degree doesn't tell us enough to figure out what that distance would be. Now think about this fact. Again, we're looking at the arc. We're looking at a part of a circle. Well, what you've got to remember is that the circumference of a circle, the distance all the way around the circle, is 2 times pi times the radius. So now we distinguish between 360 degrees and 2 times pi times the radius because 360 degrees is referring to the arc measure. So 360 degrees would be the rotation here. It would be a 360 degree rotation. Well, the distance that that is would be 2 times pi times the radius. That would give us the arc length. Now, a lot of the times when we're working with radians, we're working with what's called the unit circle. A unit circle is where your radius is 1. So if we go back to this fact that the circumference is 2 times pi times the radius, well, if we're working with a radius of 1, 2 times pi times 1 is just 2 pi. So when we're working with a unit circle, the circumference of the unit circle is just 2 pi. And so halfway around that circle is pi. A quarter of the way around the, rotation, around the circle, or 90 degrees, would be pi over 2. So how are we going to use that? Well. This comes in handy when we want to convert from degrees to radians or from radians to degrees. Because like I just said, pi radians would be half of a rotation, so it's 180 degrees. So if I want to convert from degrees to radians, we're going to use that fact. So to convert from degrees to radians, we're going to always multiply by pi over 180. If we want to, multi if we want to convert from radians to degrees, we're going to take our radian measure and multiply by 180 over pi. Now it's important to represent or to understand the difference between an answer that's going to be the exact value and an answer that's going to be the approximate value. So when the question asks, like in this next one, when it asks for the exact value for the 1,000 degrees in radians, our answer is going to be in the form of a fraction. However, in part B, when it says to find out what the approximate value would be, our answer is going to be in the form of a decimal. So let's do this first one. So to convert 1,000 degrees to radians, we're going to take and multiply by pi over 180. And technically, this is our answer. However, we don't want to leave it like this. Anytime we have a fraction, you always want to make sure you reduce it. If you don't reduce it, you're going to lose points. So for this one, here's some number tricks for you to know. If it ever ends in zeros, we can do what's called canceling out zeros. So here we have 180 has a zero, 1,000 has a zero. So I'm going to cancel out those zeros from the top and the bottom. Now I ran out of zeros in the denominator, so I can't cancel out any more zeros in the numerator. Essentially, canceling out zeros, we're just dividing by 10 or dividing by 100 or dividing by 1,000, depending on how many zeros we cancel out. So let's say I canceled out one zero on the top and bottom. Essentially, what I just did is I divided by zero. But an easy way to look at that is we're canceling zeros. So now I'm left with 100 pi and the numerator divided by 18. Now, yes, we did reduce this, but we want to make sure that it's reduced completely. So another number trick. If both numbers are even, the answers are divisible by 2. So 100 is even, 18 is even. So both of these are divisible by 2. So if I divide those by 2, 100 pi divided by 2 would be 50 pi. 18 divided by 2 is 9. So my answer would be 50 pi divided by 9 radians. Now let's figure out what would this be approximately. So it means our answer is going to be in the form of a decimal. Well, to figure out what that is, we're just going to take 50 times pi divided by 9. Now, by the way, on your calculator, please find the pi button. If you're using the TI Inspire, 
whoops, the pi button is going to be to the left of the H. So if you click on H, this screen pops up. You can just hit enter, and then you'd have the um, value for pi in there. So don't use approximations because we want to be closer to the exact values. We want to use 50 times actual value for pi divided by 9. And when you do that, we get 17.5 approximately. So this will be 17.5 radians. So why don't you guys try the next one on your own. I want you to convert 42 degrees to radians and get the exact value. And then convert 42 degrees to radians and get the approximate value. So go ahead and take a minute. Try that on your own. Hit play when you're ready to check to see if you have the correct answer. Okay, you should have gotten 7 pi over 30 as your answer. Now, to reduce that, I'm going to show you another trick. Okay, so we take multiply 42 times pi over 180. We get 42 pi divided by 180. Now, we know I just talked about the fact that if they're both even, they're both divisible by 2. Another number trick. If you add the digits together and they're divisible by, divisible by 3, then the original number is also divisible by 3. So in other words, 42. 4 plus 2 is 6. 3 goes into 6 evenly, so I know 3 goes into 42 evenly. 180. 1 plus 8 plus 0 is 9. 3 goes into 9 evenly, so that tells me 3 goes into 180 evenly. Here's another trick. If both 2 works and both numbers are also divisible by 3, that means they're also both divisible by 2 times 3, which is 6. So 42 and 180, a fast way to get to your answer, would have been just to divide the top and bottom whoops, by 6. Because 42 divided by 6 is 7, 180 divided by 6 is 30, so we get 7 pi over 30. And lastly, you just do that on your calculator and you get 0.73 radians when we do it on our calculator. Well, what if we have to convert from radians to degrees? Well, remember, if that's the case, we just multiply by 180 over pi. So I'm going to take my 1 radian, multiply this by 180 over pi. Now I know when we do that we get 180 over pi degrees. Technically that would be our answer. But when we think about degrees we don't think of pi. We want it, So we want to figure out what is the approximation here. So these are always going to be decimals. So on your calculator if you take 180 divided by pi we get approximately 57.3 degrees. So that's how we want to write our answer. So for degrees never have pi as part of your answer. When you're writing something in degrees just write it as a decimal. So why don't you guys pause the video and hit uh, play when you're ready to check your answer on the next one. So try that one on your own. Okay, you should have gotten approximately 1,650.1 degrees. Now it's very important to make sure we include our units. When we're working with degrees, we want to make sure we have the degree symbol in there. Otherwise, it's going to look like it's in radians. Uh, because when we have something in radians, we don't have a symbol for that. So we have to write down just radians or leave it in terms of pi. And that also represents the fact that we're working with radians. Speaking of radians, let's end by looking at this last uh, rule here, this formula. S equals R times uh, theta. So what this formula does is this gives us the measure of the actual arc length if we're not dealing with the unit circle. Because remember, everything we've been working with with radians has been working with the unit circle, meaning the radius was 1. So that segment was 2 times pi times a radius or 2 times pi times 1. Well, what if it's not one unit? What if you're dealing with, like this next example, we're dealing with a radius of 6 feet? Well, in that, if that's the case, we just take 6 times whatever our length is in radians, and that would give us the length of the arc. Now, it's important that our length is in radians. So with this next example, we see that it's a 50 degree central angle. And like I said, the uh, radius is 6 feet. So to find that arc length, we would have S equals, because again, S equals the length of the arc, equals our radius, which is 6, times the length in radians. So we have to make sure we take and multiply that 50 times pi over 180. Now you can do this all as one uh, step on your calculator. So if you go to your calculator, and if we just take and type in 6, and then you can do parentheses, 50 times pi over 180, so again, hit the pi button, hit enter, divided by 180, hit enter, and we get 5.24. Now, if your answer was in the form of a fraction, on your TI Inspire, just remember you have to hit control divide.
So we get 5.24. And now we've got to figure out, well, what's our units? The fact that our radius was in feet, that means the distance on that circle is also going to be in feet. So it'd be 5.24 feet would be the distance the point traveled if it was rotating 50 degrees. So why don't you guys try the next one on your own. Find the length of a 200 degree arc in a circle of radius 10.5 feet. So get, go ahead and try that. Hit play when you're ready to check to see if you have the correct answer. Well, you should have gotten 36.65 feet. Again, the radius in this case would be 10.5, so you're going to multiply that by the radian measure. So 200 times pi over 180, and you get 36.65. Well, let's apply this now to a story problem. Here it says a swing hangs from chains that are 8 feet long. How far does a seat of the swing travel if it moves through an angle of 1.25 radians? So this time, they actually were nice to us. They gave us the um, distance there in radians. And we know that the, um, that the radius is going to be 8 feet long because the swing length is 8 feet. So if you think about the swing is going to travel along the shape of a circle or the shape of an arc. And so we want to figure out how long of an arc that would be. So all you have to do for this one is take your radius, which is 8, multiply that by your radian measure, which is 1.25, and we get 10. So since our radius here was in feet, our answer is just 10 feet. So why don't you guys try this next one on your own and hit play when you're ready to check to see if you have the correct answer. And you should have gotten 10 and a half feet as your answer because in this case, your radius, again, is shortened a foot to be at 7 feet. However, the angle that you're swinging is larger. It's 1.5 radians. And ends up that even though you shortened the radius, you're still traveling a further distance of 10 and a half feet. Well, there you have it. So a couple things to make sure that we recall from this lesson. Make sure you remember this formula for when we're trying to find the arc length of a circle that doesn't have a radius of 1 when we're not working with the unit circle. Make sure that you remember how to convert. That was right here. How to convert from degrees to radians or from radians to degrees. And remember from this section here that we can uh, figure out if how many degrees something is based on its revolution. And if it's counterclockwise or clockwise, so just remember that a clockwise rotation is a negative rotation. So that covers our notes for Lesson 4.1, so you should be able to do your assignment. So with that, good luck.